Hello, dear viewers, and welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to be watching Vinland Saga Episode 4. Now, this is a continuation viewing. I just finished Episode 3, just in time for the latest episode to drop, right? So, anyways, last episode, uh, we are at the beginning of the ambush now, and we already know that this there's something fishy about this entire thing, but it doesn't matter because they are still going forward with it anyways. And so now, we are going to get into a full-fledged full battle between and his men as well as the mercenary viking group and also if last episode's reference is anything to go by uh with the mushroom there probably we're gonna have we're gonna see the anime's depiction of what a berserker is like um because that is a reference to the supposed way method that berserkers get into their frenzy state which is by eating these hallucinogenic mushrooms right so let's just see what's gonna happen here Alrighty, let's begin in 3, 2, 1, play. And if I had to venture a guess, I would say Forrest will probably die after, uh, within this engagement. Most probably trying to uh, cover the retreat of his men and son, or something like that. Right? Provide an opportunity for them to escape. I don't understand why they didn't uh, just fire arrows at them from a height advantage. I guess they want to take prisoners? Ooh. Damn, he broke his entire arm. And he's not killing them either. <laughs> he's even saving them. Oh, he's going berserk. Here we go. You two better get out of the way. <laughs> yeah, that's supposedly what happens. But they don't differentiate between friend or foe. Presumably due to the hallucinations that they're seeing. It'd be funny if he actually killed some of his men. <laughs> you know, you could just leave him there. Like, what's he gonna do? He might even fall into the water by himself. I think that's entirely possible, to be honest. Holy shit! <laughs> Who is Force? OMG! Already boarding. <laughs> yep, they want slaves. So that's why they didn't um, actually just fire arrows at them. Oh. 
Whew. Oh. oh damn, we haven't even gone with the opening yet. Okay, okay, let's see what's gonna happen. So apparently that dude still has some tricks up his sleeve. And back. Okay, so they do still have some backup. Yeah, if they want to, they could entirely just rain down arrows, and Force is not going to be able to protect all of them at once. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's trying to. <laughs> These are actually his burden instead. Okay, he knows who the leader is. Okay. Yeah. In Norse uh, tradition, they can settle differences using duels. Good question. Hmm. This is gonna be... What trick does he have up his sleeve? I don't understand. Is he looking to distract Force? Now he's going to be to him a weak point. What is he going to try and do? I don't understand. Oh, damn. This dude is n <laughs> Okay. Even I underestimated this dude. Hmm. 
He's not a pure leader type. Holy crap. He's got the brains and the bra. Well, I guess that should be expected. You know, the Norse leaders are chosen through their, um, their prowess in battle. That includes their kings as well. So he's like, I have no choice but to actually kill you now. He's actually wearing plate armor as well. He's not going to actually kill him, right? And then this s clad dude is going to... not actually going to kill him. And his arm is broken as well. What kind of stalemate is this? Hmm. Is this gonna be one? I mean, couldn't he just knock him out or something, and then force his men to re to retreat? Okay. That's a nice education for Fortran as well. What?
Is he just gonna give his head over? Well, but I don't understand. Then how does he guarantee that the rest of them stay alive? So that's how. This dude is metal as fuck. Yeah, got a sick vault. Sick vault. Yeah, if the rest- the ironic thing is, if the rest of these guys weren't here, he would have been fine. Oh, his arm's down now. It's to save you, you little shit.
what was going on. Were you even thinking? Zero. What do you mean? I did it. So there. Sportsman. Again. I mean, forgive me, but I am not sympathetic to that at all. Yeah. All right. Rest in peace. Alrighty. So in this episode, we do get to see a first taste of the Berserkers, right? So again, um, according to at least... Uh, you know, Norse mythology and whatnot, or Norse sagas, uh, berserkers are a special type of warrior that use some outside influences, such as these hallucination mushrooms, in order to get, uh, enter a state of frenzy, and, you know, then they don't differentiate between friend or foe, and they just go berserk, right? And then they just kill or smash everything um, <laughs> that they can see. Um, and I've already went into length last episode in regards to the origin and how it's not technically historical fact, but uh, it does make for some good story, right? And it's hard to prove whether they actually existed in this kind of uh, portrayal anyways. So if it makes for good story, why not? And not to mention here, <laughs> they even a berserker could not stand up to the might of fours, right? So eh, whatever. And then also, a second reference for this episode might be uh, in terms of the duel, right? So as I said, in Norse tradition, there is this concept of duels, which they call omgangs, um, which literally means going to an island, presumably to carry out this duel, right? So this is part of their tradition. They can challenge people to a duel to uphold their honor or, or whatnot, or as it was in the later stages of, of Scandinavian history, sort of like a... You know a legal way to do robbery right you can just simply challenge someone to a duel um through some trivial matter and then once you win the duel you can take their belongings their you know this and that uh in some cases they can take everything from the loser you know anything they want so it did turn into a sort of robbery in the end and so that's why uh, by the year like 1000 something something, you know before these before the start of the 12th century uh, It was essentially outlawed this practice of dueling to settle disputes um, But anyways, we don't really need to get too um, You know, we don't need to overthink it because duels between warriors on the battlefield that that has been a tradition since time memorial, right? So it doesn't doesn't necessarily have to be uh, in regards to the home games, but uh, I do feel like the anime is trying to uh, fit in this reference over here, as they have been doing these past few episodes. Now, with that said, next I'm going to say something that's probably quite controversial to a lot of you guys. Um, honestly, 
Honestly, four episodes into Finland Saga, and my favorite character so far is actually Ashclad, right? Um, so if and okay, okay, I know, I know. Let me explain. So if any of you guys have seen my previous uh, series, such as Doro from last season, or Yojusenki, which I've also done on this channel before, you'll know that I actually really appreciate characters who use their brains to uh, try and come out of a situation on top, rather than some arbitrary um, virtue such as you know bravery or or valor or or whatnot. It's war, right? It, this is a battle. This is a life or death situation. You should do whatever you can in order to come out on top. So I really appreciate these kinds of characters, um, especially in, in this case, you know, Ashlat, not only is he very smart, you know, he's already thought of, you know, this entire thing maybe being some sort of conspiracy, but even so, he's deciding to go along with it anyway, since he's weighed the pros and cons of the situation. Um, he's had, you know, numerous backup plans also uh, there in case something goes wrong, and of course, he is still strong himself as well. A strong warrior, definitely not as strong as Force, but still um, definitely quite strong in his own right, right? He's probably the second most powerful warrior there besides Force. Um, and, you know, I, like I said, I, I do appreciate these kinds of characters. To be honest, he reminds me actually uh, both in his portrayal and, you know, his characteristics and how he does things. He reminds me a lot of Tal Tal or Kakao uh, from the Three Kingdoms period. Some of you guys who, who play or understand more of the Four Three Kingdoms might know who I'm talking about. He was later the one who founded the, um, the uh, Wei Dynasty, the Jin Dynasty. Um, but anyways, uh, so I do like these kinds of, you know, very shrewd and very tactical uh, thinking people. Um, and really, uh, it's, it pains me because a lot of the times these kinds of characters, especially in, in shonen uh, series or whatnot or action series, they always get portrayed into these sort of, you know, very, um, very cheap bastards or whatnot using underhanded tricks and whatnot. But like I said, I, I just feel like that is such an unfair portrayal. And really here, I'm also kind of afraid that they're eventually going to just, you know, find some kind of arbitrary method to kill him off or whatnot. Although, uh, it remains me to see because the name of Ash Ashkeladen actually is a sort of uh, a person who appears in the Norse sagas as well, and he's typically um, portrayed as the guy who comes out on top at the end. So I do have some hope for this character. And again, maybe in the end he'll be he'll make me completely eat my words and actually be some sort of you know very very low life scum if you will but as for what he's doing right now i actually have no problem with it even if you're going to go through the honor point right i actually have a different perspective onto this like let's remember one thing he is ashlat is a mercenary right so he follows a different code of honor than that of a normal warrior for a mercenary the the number one priority is to accomplish whatever you have been tasked with, right? Your master's orders or your patron's orders. In this case, it is to bring the head of force. And remember guys, we can see clearly within this episode that Ashlad was entirely willing to give up his own life to, um, to actually complete this goal, right? He actually did not go into this uh, thinking that force would be, you know, this kind of uh, kind person and not kill anyone as evidence at in the um, closing scenes of this episode. So, in S he did not know that Forrest would be sparing his life, right? He was entirely willing to die for accomplishing his mission. Um, and that's one thing. And then, so again, uh, we have that part. And then we also have the part where, you know, you might say, okay, he mercenaries, they're just driven by greed and blah, blah, blah. But remember, he, again, his, um, the task that was, uh, bestowed on him was to get the head of Force, was to kill Force, right? The rest were not part of the deal. And so, in the end, he did actually allow the rest to, uh, leave if, you know, as part of his promise with Force. Now, if he was purely just profit-driven, 
you know, there's absolutely no reason for him to, to let these other people go, right? Force is dead, what's he gonna do, right? So you got all these able-bodied men, which I'm pretty sure will sell for a pretty high price on the slave market, and yet he chose to let them go, right? So that means that he does have his own principles, he's just following something different from uh, what Force is. Um, at least that's how I'm interpreting the, this situation anyways. Like I said, even if in the end he did not honor this code and simply enslaved all of them, Honestly, I really can't say much about that outcome as all. Well. Like, what, you know, what exactly does he have, um, why does he need to keep this promise to a dead man, right? I'm just saying, he's a mercenary through and through, he's a pirate, he's not actually there as a warrior, he has no, there's absolutely no need for him to follow the expectations of someone else who he doesn't even know that well, right, who he doesn't even know at all, so... Already, I feel like he's being very generous by allowing Thorfinn and the others to, uh, to walk away as free men. Um, so, yeah. Uh, anyways, and, you know, there's this one scene which I also find very particular, uh, very peculiar, and that is the part where he invites uh, Thor to be their leader, right? Um, my interpretation of the situation is like this. So, if Force was, because he recognizes that Force is such a huge force, right? He's definitely a talent that is, uh, transcendental. And so, I think what he's, he's thinking of at that point is that if Force was their leader, then maybe they could, um, they could retire from this, um, this way of living as mercenaries and maybe organize into a formal, uh, militaristic organization as well something like that and go back to being warriors or whatnot um but uh as can we can see you know through their you know through their eye contact they probably had some unspoken uh words passed through them you know ashclad eventually determined that no this was impossible for us was not going to accept this um and so that's why in the end he still decided to live by his mercenary ethos right so yeah, anyways, that's a long, again, that's, um, this is probably gonna not sit well with some of you guys, but I absolutely love characters such as this one, who live by their own code and not through some expectations that other people expect of them, right? Um, and so, yeah. And then finally we get to Thorfinn, right? And honestly, you know, again, pardon me, but I really don't have any sympathy for this dude at all, Like, right? Do you even know that... He, you know, does Thorfinn even have the idea that he is actually the reason why his father died, right? You know, if he wasn't there, if the rest of them wasn't, weren't there, Forrest probably would have got out of that situation um, alive. Maybe wounded, or maybe he would have been killed anyways, but still he would have been alive. He would have at least dealt a very mortal blow to the mercenaries. And, I don't know, man, he's just... Uh... I mean, he is the main character, so I'm gonna have to learn to tolerate him, but so far he's really not earning any points on my end. Um, neither through his actions or whatnot, or at the very end where he's trying to, you know, get into this all, you know, very ragey, how could you kill my father, whatnot. Well, tough luck, dude. <laughs> That's the result of you being useless and also sneaking up onto the ship at the same time. So, there we go. So, again, uh, if in the future Thorfinn um, eventually proves me wrong and becomes a great character, fine, fine. If Ashlad eventually turns out into be a low-life scum, fine. At this present moment, I'm still saying that I like Ashlad's character much more, much more. And I hope that he actually um, has a good, successful career. So, anyways, that's been episode 4 of Villain Saga. Um, we finally caught up to the series, so potentially from next week on, we'll probably be having these episodes on time. So stay tuned for the next one. Uh, let me know your thoughts in regards to the characters, and I will see you guys next time.